I came up with the idea of my first episode when I was at the Canvas Gallery with Dee. I go to Canvas to seek inspiration, to write, and to chill out. Working on it right now, who knows where it could go. I was looking at the art and I saw several artists that were torn by love. One artist wrote, don't call her, like 5,000 times on a piece of paper. I thought that was interesting. I was able to relate to that. I've been at that point and everyone has. That point when you're so caught up in love that it just takes over. That same artist did another piece and wrote, I love you, several thousand times. It took him six hours. Then I read a quote from Catherine Belsey's book, Desire, which really struck me. She explores the notion of love as a game, basically, and, and Cupid. It's really interesting. She's basically saying that, you know, Cupid shoots us with two different arrows. The first arrow, you know, fills our hearts with passion and love and all that good stuff. And then the second arrow leaves you never feeling unsatisfied, ever. I think that's a good concept for a show right there. And after that, it all fell into place. I wanted to explore the games that people play. So I called the first episode, Games of the Heart. My journey began when I actually went out there and engaged people in conversations. Jack, Jack, do you mind if I sit down with you for a little bit? Yeah, and talk? Do you think romance is often like a game where there are like winners and losers, you know, there's strategy involved? Can it be perceived like that? Only if you enter into it as a game playing situation. Right, right. Uh, time tells you who is playing a game and who isn't. Time will tell you? How's that? You can't read the signs right away? Mm -hmm. No? individual that you meet and you go out with and support and so on can be an entirely different person whenever you cross over that barrier and say, okay, it's time to go into a relationship. Wow. Because of the yeah. fact that once everyone has made a commitment to go into the relationship, then they, everybody feels like that they can be themselves, you know. And that's when all the freaky stuff starts coming out, <laughs> you know, it's like, oh man, you know, you don't realize a person has like a serious porn addiction, next thing you know, she's boiling your bunny and stealing your rims, you know, but not that that ever happened to me or anything, but at the same time, you know, you put yourself at stake, you know, you open your heart to, you know, to all this pain and, and hopefully you learn to love that person for all their idiosyncrasies. No. <laughs> there comes a time when it's called balance. It's just balance? Yeah. Whenever it gets out of balance, then get rid of it. Mm -hmm. Well, having a really great conversation here with my good friend Jack. You're watching the Victor Estrella Show. Hope you guys are having a good day. Thanks for talking, Jack. My pleasure. Really appreciate it. Have a good one. I asked people what they thought a player was or if they thought that finding romance was like a game. Do you guys feel like romance is a game where there's a lot of winners and losers? A lot of people play it that way. Yeah. Yeah, it's really sad what romance has become. It's just like the MTV generation romance. It has to do with like looking at somebody who's hot or whatever. It has nothing to do with the heart anymore. I don't like to look at it like that, but sometimes it turns out that way. Like learning how to react and respond to the other person's emotions, I guess that can be a game. But it was not a game. That was what comes to you, and you accept it. Whatever you accept is what life is, basically. If the person, if you choose to let the person in your life, they might add some dimension to it, but they're not, the, they're not the first priority. You're always the first priority. You always come first, but it's not to be selfish, but you're letting the person love you. I control with her part of my life. Yeah, she's in my circle. She's in your circle? Yeah and I hope to be in her circle.
if we're talking about a player, we're talking about somebody who is has a goal in mind before meeting a person. And so that goal may be something that is superficial, right? And uh, they'll do whatever they can to maybe trick somebody into allowing them to achieve their goal. A player who is successful, let's say, is somebody who's probably very charming and who already has a way of knowing what people want to hear. And so they may be overly complimentary in the beginning. They get a person to feel very comfortable with them and try to indicate some sort of false sense of trust. To me, it also means that they're protecting themselves from having any real relationship with someone. So for whatever reason, they're feeling some sort of insecurity about themselves and may not be willing to um, risk a real relationship with someone. Maybe they're afraid of being hurt. You know, women, they can be players, but it just seems that they weren't hardwired to be. You know, I, I made this observation when I was at the club the other night, and I saw this beautiful girl. You know, she was, you know, long, streaky blonde hair. She was decked out in the Gucci. She had the D&G boots on. She was just gleaming, and she was in the middle of the dance floor just getting her groove on, getting her groove on, and she was looking good, you know, and I just saw guy after guy after guy come up to her, and she was just like, no, bam, no, bam, no, bam, bam, bam. In, in her situation, she's probably used to having guys coming at her like that and she's waiting for somebody that maybe is a challenge. You don't have to be a player but you have to play a certain game. Yeah. So a lot of people don't look at it that way but it seems that it is still a game. Is romance, can it be deduced to playing a game? I mean there's winners and losers, there's strategy involved. Can it be deduced to that in this modern I, world? I think in the beginning there is an element of that, yeah. Because you're trying to get somebody's interest. Mm -hmm. And so when you're trying to get someone's interest, there is a certain amount of self-presentation. Right. And there is a certain amount of playfulness mm -hmm. that co should come out too. Right. And that keeps people going. What would you suggest to men that, you know, they're, they're not going to use the pickup lines. Mm -hmm. They're, you know, they, they have somewhat uh, a good knowledge and, and somewhat have built up the courage to approach a lady. So sure. what should they say? Uh, if not being a player, but I think you do want to play it so that you're not revealing all of your feelings at once. So you want to balance it and say, hey, I'm interested, but also keep some things to yourself. Wow. Then I explored San Francisco nightlife where the games of the heart are played. I hope you guys got your dancing shoes on. I can hear the music from here. The bass is pounding. We're about to get jiggy. It's gonna be live. It's gonna be crazy. Games of the heart. San Francisco exploring our rhythm. What's up, y'all? Harry Dens Rouge. Is that small? Really? That's a bliss bar. But, but it shouldn't matter, though, right? From 111 Minna Gallery. All about the motion of the ocean. Influence. We're about to kick it live. That, that's what I'm saying. The, the motion is what matters. Oh, hey, what's going on? What's up, boys and girls? You are watching the Victor Estrella Show. We're hanging out right now with the Bam Buddha Bar. This seems to be the place where all the singles are out to come and play. You know, it's new, it's popping, it's still early, and it's about to get live up in here right now. Fluid in San Francisco, you're watching the Victor Estrella Show. I'm about to get a drink. Hi, what's up, my man? Can I just get a water? 